Thank you very much to the organizers for the invitation. I've been very happy to follow this seminar series here from Uppsala and, and uh, very happy to be here to give a talk, especially on this remarkable day. So we have French people in the committee, so, so bonne fête nationale to people in France. Uh, but of course, I'm in Sweden, and in Sweden, uh, July 14th is, is a remarkable day also, but for a different reason. So today is the 44th birthday of Her Royal Highness, the Princess Victoria, future Queen of Sweden. So we celebrate that somehow. Anyway, let's get on with the map. So indeed, I will check that everything works, right? So I will be talking about torsors under exceptional groups. So this is a work that's sort of a long-term kind of work that started with uh, a joint paper with Philippe Gilles that appeared uh, two years ago, where we dealt with uh, groups of type G2 and groups of type D4 over rings. So maybe I should say this because this is the, the point, so over rings. And uh, these were related to octonian algebras and isotopes of octonian algebras. Then uh, after that, uh, I had some results on Albert algebra. So moving to the next step where we want to understand groups of type D4, F4, and E6. And I've sort of talked about the D4, F4 part at some occasion, but not so much the E6 part. So that's where I plan to focus today. Uh, this uh, paper recently appeared in the Canadian Journal of Mathematics. And then I will share with you some preliminary results on relating groups of type E6 and E7 to uh, very, and looking at torsors and what they do there. This is work in progress. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, last year was exceptional, unfortunately not in, in an exceptional group kind of way. So I haven't had time to, to finish this. So. so uh, these results are preliminary. But first, let's look at some background and some known things. So what is the whole idea of this enterprise? The idea is that we group over R. So, so what is R throughout this talk? R is a unital. commutative ring. Further restrictions will come at the very end, but so far just a unital commutative ring. So we want to study affine group schemes over R of exceptional type. Uh, and uh, the point is, let's maybe assume that, well, take a, a subgroup, an algebraic subgroup. Uh, then we can consider the FPPF quotient G mod H, not a group in general, but, but still we get a torsor, H torsor, from the quotient projection. And uh, the point is we want to understand this in terms of some concrete algebra A. And so why do we do this? Well, there, it goes in two directions. First of all, there are a bunch of algebraic constructions on non-associative algebras that get a new sense thanks to this. So this gives a geometric view on uh, algebraic constructions. And it's not just a view, it gives you uh, new uh, results and classifications in terms of cohomology. And conversely, using algebras give you a concrete way to realize H torsors and related geometric objects. So 
let me start with the background part to uh, give some encouragement. So for the background part, so this was the joint work with Philippe Gilles. There we looked at an octonian algebra C So, so this is something that has, well, over fields dimension eight, rank eight algebra with a multiplicative quadratic form. So, so such an algebra has a quadratic form. I say QC. And uh, the reason we're interested in this is that, so over fields, QC determines C. But Philippe Gilles had proved that over some rings or over rings, this is in general not the case. So we wanted to understand the octonian algebras that had the same quadratic form as a given octonian algebra. And so in, in this situation, we took as our group G, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the isometry group of uh, uh, the quadratic form Q, tweaked a bit. So what we really looked at was the spin group of QC. And as our H, the automorphism group of C. So this is simply connected, semi-simple group of type D4, and this is, yeah, of course, simply connected uh, group of type G2. And then it turns out that one can visualize this. So I will use the sloppy notation of, uh, okay, no, I've, let's not do this. So I have a group G and G mod H. And here, this is an H torsor. And the way we did this was that we realized that, okay, this quotient actually is isomorphic to two copies of a seven dimensional sphere, the unit sphere of the octonians. And this map is realized by triality. So, so this map is realized by triality. So, so then we had a concrete picture of this and then also twists by this. So this gives us a torso and twists by this torso, let me call it E, are twists by E of our original algebra C are precisely the isotopes of C. And so what is an isotope? So these are algebras with a new multiplication. Where you simply add into the equation a pair a, B of such elements. So you tweak the multiplication. People have known about these isotopes for a long time, but it wasn't clear if they gave anything new, if any. And, and so the upshot of this is that with a new as a corollary of, of this business, that uh, an octonian algebra C prime has the same quadratic form as C, if and only if C prime is an isotope of C. So this was the, um, the, the, the main result of, of that paper. And so what I will 
talk about now tries to do the same thing for Albert algebras, using them to explore groups of type F4 and E6. And please interrupt me with questions or remarks whenever uh, you have any. So our goal is to understand F4, E6, and E7. And our tool will be Albert algebras. So these are exceptional Jordan algebras. So why do you go to I... the spin group rather than just the orthogonal group? Yes, right. So uh, the the theory tells us exactly that you should use the orthogonal group, but then we prove that you might just as well use the um, Yes, yeah, so, so the orthogonal group is not, not connected. So you took its connected component, the special orthogonal group, and then its cover, uh, so, so then the spin group. And the reason we did that was, uh, well, then we got a, a connected, simply connected group, but also triality works for that group. So we could use uh, this, this uh, principle of triality directly uh, on the spin group. So that was the advantage of it. So the spin group has a convenient realization as the set of triples t1, t2, t3 uh, in SO of QC such that t1 of xy equals t2 of x, t3 of y. And that was essentially the realization that we used. The principle of triality. So, so that was why we used the spin group. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So for exceptional Jordan algebras and for Jordan algebras in general, as you may know, there is the classical definition as an algebra that works in characteristic different from two. And then uh, Kevin McCurman started the business of defining these things in characteristic two as well. And I thought I would give you the characteristic free definition of Jordan algebras so that you get a flavor of the kind of objects we um, deal with. So uh, let us get into these Albert algebras. So, so what is a Jordan algebra? So a Jordan algebra Uh, named after Pascual Jordan, not Camille Jordan. So Jordan algebra over R is an R module, J, together with well, a distinguished element that is denoted one in J. So this is the unital, there are non-unital Jordan algebras that I will not go into. And usually in an algebra, you have a bilinear multiplication, but this is replaced now. So instead of the bilinear multiplication, you have a quadratic map. Quadratic map. Uh, from J to the linear endomorphisms of J that is denoted in the following way. You map X to UX. This is a so-called U operator satisfying first U1 is the identity on J. Second, some sort of commutativity, u, u, x, y is u, x, u, y, u, x. And third, some other compatibility, 
that I will write down so that you have it, but do not worry, it looks a bit messy. So, so this V uh, operator is defined in the, it's somehow the linearization of the U operator. So V A B of C. This is you take U A plus C minus U A minus U C and apply this whole thing to B. And another way to denote this is as the triple product A, B, C. So this is a Jordan algebra. And so what happens if the characteristic is different from two? Or, I mean, uh, in, in the sense of schemes. So, so what you want to do, we, we want to have two invertible in your ring R. Then we can define a bilinear multiplication. where we take x times y is equal to one half of the triple product of x and one and y. And this makes j into a so-called linear or classic Jordan algebra. What this means is that it is uh, a commutative unital algebra satisfying the Jordan identity, namely that x times x square y. So it's a weak associativity property somehow these algebras are non-associative but you want this to happen so then you're in the classic setting and conversely given a linear jordan algebra uh, you can define the operator ux in such a way that uxy is 2x times xy minus x square y. And then you get a quadratic or a Jordan algebra as I defined it here. So in characteristic, when two is invertible, I should say, since we work over rings, this is the same thing. But McCrimmon's definition gives the right thing in characteristic two. And in general, when two is not invertible. And so we're one step closer to defining the Albert algebras. But as you can see, I mean, this is, it's a non-associative algebra. So you need some other structure that is more friendly to work with. And so an example of Jordan algebras are the so-called cubic Jordan algebras. So, so what is a cubic Jordan algebra? It consists of an R module J that has a bunch of data from which this U operator is constructed. So you still require this one, uh, this distinguished element J. Then also you want a quadratic map known as the adjoint from j to j mapping x to it's denoted x sharp and the cubic form um, from j to the base ring r that is denoted m and then from this so, so these have to be, of course, satisfying compatibility conditions that I will not mention. And from this, 
we get a u operator in the following way ux of y is t x y x minus x sharp cross y so this is the bilinear trace that comes from the normalization, uh, sorry, linearization of the cubic form. And the cross product is simply defined as uh, U cross V maybe a cross b it's the linearization of the adjoint so it's a plus b sharp minus a sharp minus b sharp okay so this is a cubic jordan algebra and what is an albert algebra an albert algebra is a cubic jordan algebra of the right dimension that is simple so what does this mean Finally, now, an Albert algebra is a cubic Jordan algebra, and say J over R, such that first. The module J is finitely generated projective of rank 27. And J tensor over R with K is simple for all fields K over R. This is an Albert algebra. And simple, so there's a notion of ideal with respect to this quadratic definition, and simple is not having ideals. So this is the proper definition of a Jordan algebra. Uh, the reference uh, is Peterson's survey article that came out two or three years ago. Uh, but let me just recapitulate. So we have replaced the multiplication by this u operator and we look at a special kind of jordan algebras those having some cubic form and some adjoint in terms of which our u operator is defined and if they have the right dimension and no ideals then we call them albert algebras so what is a more concrete or hands-on example. Uh, it's the split Albert algebra. Or, okay, so, so maybe you fell asleep during this definition, so let me give you a quicker way to define this. So the split Albert algebra over the integers, this is the three by three Hermitian matrices of octonian so three times three hermitian matrices over the split octonian algebra c zero over z so so this is one and a fact is that Albert algebras over our ring R are precisely FPPF twisted forms of this thing, of the split. Albert algebra. So this is one way to view these things. 
And one remark that this construction H3 of C can be made for any octonian algebra C over R. And in fact, for any composition of quadratic forms, of rank eight over R. And actually the, the definition of H3C is more natural if you consider not C, but the para-octonian algebra, symmetric composition algebra related to the octonians, for those of you who know this. And this was uh, part of, so, uh, this was, I used this, Uh, in my recent paper to uh, study twists of, uh, say, such a composition by the torsor well, alt J or alt H three C down into alt H three C modulo the spin group Q C. And I don't have time to uh, talk about these results. I have talked about them before. But one uh, special corollary of this is that over rings um, H3C determines neither C nor QC. So over fields, there is this result by Albert and Jacobson from 59 that an Albert algebra constructed from an octonian algebra in such a way completely determines the octonian algebra up to isomorphism. Because of Philippe Gilles result from six years ago, seven years ago, this is too much to hope for, but maybe it at least determines the quadratic form of the octonian algebra, but in fact, no. So, so this is what we know now. But uh, let's move on from this and look at isotopes of Albert algebras. So henceforth, let's forget a bit about octonians and let's look at J, B and Albert algebra over our unital commutative ring R. Then there is a construction of isotopes. So given an element P in J with norm P invertible, uh, we get a new uh, one obtains an Albert algebra J P. So what is this algebra? This is, um, so I need to tell you what is the distinguished element and the distinguished element is n p inverse p sharp so some distinguished element related to p 
uh, and this is also known as p inverse and the u operator uxp is just you compose ux with up so you tweak the operations on the jordan algebra a little so these are the isotopes and we may assume that the norm of p is equal to one so what do i mean by that so so given our jordan algebra and an element inside this jordan algebra we can create an isotope we can do this for any p with invertible norm but any such isotope will be isomorphic to an isotope where p has norm one so we only need to consider p with norm one okay so now how do all how does all of this fit into algebraic groups where do the algebraic groups come from so here come some facts so the automorphism group of j of any albert algebra is a semi-simple algebraic group over r of type f4 this is known it's also known that every group of type f4 arises in such a fashion so let us call this group g uh, no sorry h For G, I want to consider the group of isometries of the cubic form of J. N is the cubic form of J. And this is also a semi-simple, simply connected algebraic group. of type E6. So we, you don't get all groups of type E6. If R is a field where both two and three are invertible, then you get all groups of type E6-1 with trivial tits algebras. So if R is a field containing one six, then any group of type E six one, the Tits algebras, as you probably know, they are uh, dimorphisms algebras of some representations of, of the group and having trivial Tits, al these are central simple algebras, so we want them to be split. This is what is known as trivial its algebra but anyway it's some proper subset of, of these groups okay so uh, in fact h is a subgroup of g namely the s points of h for any r algebra s these are the set of all G in GS that fix the distinguished element. So we can play the same game that we did with the octonians. So we set, you know what is a good notation, Sn of S to be the set of all elements in J tensor over Rs, such that the norm of A is equal to one. So this is the unit sphere with respect to the cubic norm. And now, so proposition, The FPPF quotient G 
mod h is representable by the smooth scheme Sn. So this means that we get a torsor. So we have a projection G onto Sn that takes an element G here and maps it to G of one inverse for some reason, but that's just a technicality. And so this gives a torsor, an H torsor uh, over Sn. So remember, this is a group of type E6 and H is a group of type F4. So an H torsor with respect to the uh, FPPF uh, topology. And so if we take an element P here, we might wonder what if we twist our algebra with this torsor? And as you might expect, the twist, maybe I call this projection pi of j by pi inverse of p is canonically isomorphic to the isotope jp. So if you compute exactly what should be the multiplication or U operator of this twist, it's exactly that algebra uh, on the nose. So this notion that isotopes or algebraic constructions are actually given by twists of torsors holds for Albert algebras as well. In a funny way, Albert algebras isotopes are less exciting than octonian isotopes. So uh, it is known that even over fields, so, so with octonians, the exciting question was that, okay, so we get these isotopes. Do we have isotopes that are not isomorphic? And thanks to Philip's result earlier on octonians, we knew that the answer is yes. So now we wonder, do we have that? And in fact, this is known already over fields. There exist non-isomorphic isotopes, but not if J is split. And as a corollary of the theorem, we get, so corollary of the theorem, not of this fact, that there exists a ring over the complex numbers, a smooth C ring, such that over R, the split Albert algebra has non-isomorphic isotopes. So this means that the split group of type E6 contains, uh, over this ring, contains non-isomorphic subgroups of type F4 that we can characterize explicitly because we know exactly what they are the automorphism groups of, namely these isotopes. So what do we have so far? Let me try to uh, draw some pictorial thing. Uh, picture, I guess, is a better name. Uh, 
Uh, uh, say Don, what is the what is the P in the theorem? Is that the ring valued point? Uh, right. Thank you. So, so the P, yes, it's an. Um, okay. So exactly, all of this takes place in S N of R. Yeah. So, so P is. It's a point in. So, so the point is that this action is transitive, but transitive in the FPPF sense. So there is an, a faithfully flat extension uh, over which this action becomes transitive. So if you take some random P over the base ring, it is not necessarily in the orbit of uh, one. So, so yeah, I shouldn't write, I mean, um, you, you, you do this, and then when you when you um, when you construct the associated sheaf, you will get p that are not in the orbit over R already. That's what I'm trying to say. So those give you the non-isomorphic isotopes. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Thanks. Okay, so what do we have so far? Well, we started with groups of type G2 that are automorphism groups of octonian algebra. So these we fairly understand. With the help of them, we can understand groups of type D4 because we have this projection of D4 on this pair of seven spheres that came from the octonians. And this is a G2 torsor. So I write G2 next to the arrow. Okay, so now we should try to understand groups of type D4, or now we know more about groups, groups of type D4. So we can look at D4 torsors, and there is a torsor with total space F4. And here some uh, variety, let's call it F. This comes from the result I mentioned about Compositions of quadratic forms sitting inside, um, sitting inside Albert algebras. Okay, great. Now we have a better grasp of groups of type F4. I mean, this is a very schematic picture. So now we look at these. We have torsors with total space E6, and this cubic norm sphere down below. And this was what I just mentioned with the isotopes, we can understand this. So, so now we want to use groups of type E6 to understand something about groups of type E7. So, so G2, D4, F4, E6, and E7 are the five first exceptional groups of the six exceptional groups in the classification. So this is the natural next step. So what should we use for this, uh, for this to work? And the answers, so the answer to this, to, to these, come from the brown algebras. So these were introduced by brown. Uh, introduced by Brown in 1963. And Brown has a bunch of papers uh, on those from the 60s. Uh, my main references over fields are uh, the papers by Skip Garibaldi in the year 2000 and 2001, among others. Springer has also written a paper from the year 2006, if I'm not mistaken, about similar things. So, so this I should put in parentheses. So what is a Brown algebra? So let us for the moment look over fields. So over a field K, and we want six to be invertible. So we exclude fields of characteristic two and three. So 
given an Albert algebra, J over K, we consider the following construction. We define it's denoted B J um, K times K theta. This is the set of all matrices with diagonal entries alpha beta and non-diagonal entries A B where I write it this way so that you see where the why it is k times k and a and b belong to j. You consider these things. So quick computation, j has dimension 27. The off-diagonal parts have dimension 54. Uh, the diagonal parts have dimension 2. So this is a 56-dimensional algebra. And you define a multiplication in terms of the uh, trace, the bilinear trace that I mentioned earlier of J and the cross product. So I will not give you the exact formula, but uh, that's the ingredient that go into this. And so where does this theta come from? And an invertible scalar theta in K. Okay, so what do we know about this algebra? This is an algebra with involution. So let me call it B for brevity. So B is an algebra with involution. The involution takes alpha, beta, A, B and just switches the scalars. Does nothing to the off-diagonal part. And for those of you who are familiar, this is an example of a structurable algebra, um, such as have appeared in the work of Alberto El Duque, among others. Uh, so this is uh, an algebra. And still working over fields. So this is called, so, so this is if J is the split Albert algebra, B is known as the split Brown algebra. And a Brown algebra to court is a twisted form of this. So is an algebra uh, B prime with involution such that B prime tensor with the separable closure of K is isomorphic to the split Brown algebra. So, yeah. Okay. And so how can these algebras concretely look? Well, basically you, so these algebras that I'm describing here these are the type one uh, Brown algebras. And then if you take not K times K, but some non-trivial field extension, 
some non-split etal algebra, quadratic etal algebra, you get the type two guys, essentially. So let us uh, focus for the moment on these algebras. And uh, let me mention some preliminary results to show you the general direction that I'm working in right now. And the main flavor of these preliminary results is that some of them, well, you will see. So, okay, let's look at preliminary results. And the main takeaway from these preliminary results is that, so why preliminary? I have this principle that a mathematical statement is assumed false until it's typeset in tech. And this is not typeset in tech, so this is preliminary. Uh, if all of this indeed works out, then this means that this philosophy of torsors and isotopes carries over to Brown algebras as well. So we get the same understanding of E7 over E6. Uh, as we got for E6 over F4. So where does E7 come from? So first the proposition that the map, so now take our uh, unital commutative ring, but we again require that it contains one over six. So we get we have a map from the isometry group of the cubic norm of J to the automorphism group of this Brown algebra with respect to J R times R, let's say one for simplicity. So this is analogous to the definition over fields. But now my base scalars come from this ring. So how does this work? I have an isometry G. And so I want to act on, so remember I had scalars here. I don't do anything to the scalars. I act with G here and with some dual of G here. So G, this is a dual in E6. This map you can define, and this is an isomorphism. And so over fields, this is due to Garibaldi. And which of the two papers is it in? It's in the 2001 paper. And then uh, to go over rings, you just use EGA to go to, to rings. So, so you know, you, you, you have, you establish the map and then you need to check things fiber-wise and, and then all the results are there. So, so not much work uh, needed here. And so what we know is that the automorphism group of this algebra that I will still call B is of type E6. I should say that this is not, I, I should put a connected component here. Okay. So, okay, great. We have groups of type E6. So where do groups of type E7 come from? Well, so the algebra B comes with a non-degenerate skew symmetric bilinear form B and a trilinear map from B times B times B to B. 
For those of you who are familiar with Freudenthal triple systems, let me just say, I, I am not an expert on Freudenthal triple systems, but this B, B, T, this map is called T, is a Freudenthal triple system. And if we take now as our group G, the invariance group of this BBT, so the linear maps on B that preserve B and T, this is a group of type E7. So, so this again is Garibaldi plus BGA. And so, so this I call G and let's call this connected component H. And in fact, so G acts on the set of all X in B such that Q of X is equal to minus two. So what is Q of X? This is a quartic form. Uh, that comes from the four linear form Q blank, 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 blank equals um, B of blank, T of blank, blank, blank. So from this B and T, we have this quartic form Q. And now we look at some sort of unit sphere. It's weird that it has, that the value is minus two. The point is that this includes this guy. Also minus two is in the conventions of Brown. In Garibaldi's convention, this is 12. But since six is invertible, it doesn't matter. We just fix a convention and look at all elements with this fixed value of Q. So G acts on this and the stabilizer of one, zero, zero, one is H the uh, connected component of the automorphism group or the the, uh, um, the isometry group of the cubic norm on the Albert algebra. So the point is that this, I, I am, since this is the last minute and these are anyway preliminary results, I will say this sketchingly, that uh, this gives a torso. So maybe I call this, uh, I don't know, SQ. So we have a group G of type E7 on this SQ, and this is an H torso. So this is type E7, this is type E6, and twists are isotopes. There is a notion of isotopy of Brown algebras that is actually more interesting than isotopy of Albert algebras because over fields, all these isotopes are indeed isomorphic, but it seems not over rings. But this, the, so this is a story to be continued, but I hope that I have more or less convinced you that uh, we can use this and uh, work forward to get to groups of type E7. So, this is a good time for me to stop. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any question? Any question? What about type E8? <laughs> I was <laughs> fearing slash hoping for that question. Well, so uh, with type E8, yes. Yeah, so, so, so the, the, the place where I think there is the most hope and that I will look into next is this variety of dimension 56 on which E8 acts. So, so there is a variety, the action is not linear, 
but I mean, mathematically it's some flag variety, but what is perhaps more helpful is that some physicists seem to have a more concrete understanding of what this variety is. So if we manage to understand what these physicists mean, then hopefully we will find some action on maybe not one copy, but two copies of this variety to, to relate E8 to E7. So, so that is some, some vague, uh, vague idea, but, but uh, yeah, the, 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 that is the plan in that direction. So you, you mean E8 modulo P8? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. But this, I mean, this is very vague. It's just something that I have in mind that one should look at. Maybe if it gives nothing, I, I don't know. That, that part is, is part of the story. Okay. So is there any, any other question? Yeah, yeah. So I, I have, a, okay, so, uh, so the first vibration we were considering uh, this, uh, you know, this spin, spin eight mod G two. Okay, so so it, it's it's uh, yes, that thank you. So uh, so this this vibration is uh, is is non trivial, but Zariski locally trivial. Okay, it admi it admits lo local section for for Zariski topology. So my, if I have understand well the second one uh, is not trivial for the risky so so even over fields you you, you have uh, you, you have, but what about the two others right yes so these this is non trivial the risky this is non trivial the risky and the answer is so for this definitely i don't know there is a chance it is because over fields uh, it is trivial. Okay, so it should be. It should be. I mean, if it you should be if risky, you, uh, with Panin Fedorov, uh, you 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 over, you you have the already the yeah, I mean, yeah, ah, a big okay. budget. Right, right. Yeah, th thanks. I, I I haven't looked at the Zariski topology. I'll look into that. For this one, F four mod D four I. Do not think so. I think that even there over fields, you might have, uh, um, yeah, because what comes into play here are these compositions of quadratic forms, the C1, C2, two, C3, that generalize octonian algebras. And I'm pretty sure there is something that is not isomorphic to an octonian algebra over fields, but I'm, I'm not sure, but I wouldn't expect this to be a Zariski non-trivial. Uh, I, I would expect this to be Zariski non-trivial. No. Um, what am I trying to say? Yeah, exactly. Zariski non-trivial. Yes, yes. So, so they should all be, but uh, I, uh, I don't have any results uh, concretely. Okay. That. Thank you. Thanks. Um, just to make sure by saying Zariski non-trivial, what, what, what do you mean that it splits over Zariski covering? Yes, so, so you have uh, you, you have this. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so, so you take two, uh, for example, algebras or points, and then uh, over after a Zariski cover, it it trivializes the torso. I was confused by the terminology. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. No problem. More questions. More questions, comments? So I just have a small one. So concerning this last example, we see seven. So you, you mentioned there are two types of brown algebras, right? Yes. So which which is seven? I mean, you, you do it for both of them or just for the type uh, so, one? So right now, yes. Yeah, so, so there are some important subtleties. So, so um, OK, so, so for these two types, their automorphism groups over fields are E6 of type one, so E61, E62. And over fields, any E7 with the trivial tits algebras arises as the invariance group of some Brown algebra. But this, there, there is some, so um, the, I'm now considering only the first type of Brown <laughs> algebra. But, and that is because with the second type, uh, you have 
problems. So over fields, it's a result by uh, Garibaldi that over fields, um, let me get the implication right. If two Albert algebras, if J and J prime already have the same norm, then uh, they give rise to the same algebra. But this is not necessarily the case for the second type. There you might have J and J prime that do have the same norm, but are non-isomorphic and still uh, don't give the same uh, Brown algebra. So, so this somehow means that for the second type, groups of type F4 also come into the picture. It's not just between E6 and E7. So that I haven't looked into at all. That is the, uh, uh, the, the sort of next part to, to consider. So, so far, the, the preliminary results today are only for the first type, the, the explicitly constructed type. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there more questions? So going questions? back to E8, I, I didn't mm -hmm. quite understand what you said, because the pattern seems to be that you have an algebra in each case. Yes. Um, so what would be the algebra? Do you, do yeah, you right. Work, so will so you my, work my, with uh, the Lie algebra of type E8? Uh, no. So, so for type E8, I think that, so, so really the, uh, OK, I, I hope I'm not shooting myself in the foot, as we say in, in, in Swedish, uh, meaning I'm, I'm telling you that's what so yes we are using the algebras but really only to get these varieties so we get this variety sn we get the variety f we get the variety s seven times s seven and so on and so for e8 i think we should go directly on this flag variety e8 mod p8 as a variety not as something coming from an algebra simply because so, so i mean the dimensions have to be right so uh, this S Q here has dimension 55, and this is exactly the difference of dimensions between 133 and, and 78. And so for E8, I want to have some E7 here and then something here. So this is 248. This is um, 133. So this should be, oh boy, 150. Right? So um, the uh, if we use some say hypersurface inside the Lie algebra, this would be too big. And so this is why this rather small variety, I think by taking pairs of it or, or something like that, you can get something. And that's what some physicists have given some interpretation, but it's not clear. So, so the plan is to go directly on the variety of dimension 56 that one has and not use an algebra. So this was, it would be great if there were some uh, small dimensional algebra. I saw that um, there was a recent paper by Garibaldi uh, about some algebra with automorphism group E8, uh, but that had a much bigger dimensions. So, so to stay with small dimensions, I think so far my, my best uh, shot is the uh, variety, flag variety. Uh, so, so, so skip. Uh, yeah, there was a comment in the chat by skip about type one. Uh, right. So for type two, the base space of the torso is empty, at least over a field. Right. Ah. Uh, right. Yes. I, I, yeah, I haven't looked at, but they, they might have some non-empty base space over rings. Can they, if the ring is not a field? And then they would be. But I mean, FPPF locally, we can certainly only consider the first. We only need to consider the first type. But but then the question is to get a, a construction for all of them. Yeah. But, but thanks for the comment. Okay. I'll, uh, that, that's 